Well, it's taken a while, but the football Cougars finally have their home opener in the friendly confines of Darcy Stadium. St. Edwards, you mentioned that meanwhile scoring 45 points in their season opening victory at Missouri Baptist, now with two straight defeats against tough opponents. The Fighting Bees had a 10-0 lead headed to halftime last Saturday at Siena Heights, but it was the Saints who scored the next 20 points, giving SAU its 1-2 and two record coming in here today. We've got a special halftime feature coming up. We'll tell you more about that. <laughs> here comes the kick, and Adams runs up to it. has got it at the 11. Works right side at the house. Hash mark comes middle of the field, looking for a block. Gets it, turns 25, 30, 35. Down the near sidelines, caught from behind after he reached the 45-yard line. And they'll give him another yard, I believe, up close to the 36. So a good job by the freshman. Very good job there. Adams uh, was patient in his run, but still outran a few blockers that time. But still, his athleticism uh, pulls him out to a great start for the USF offense. And let's see what Crable's able to do now on second down and nine. Offset to the right side is Williams. Short drop here's Crable throws in traffic and let's see if that ball is he caught. caught it. Inside the 30 yard line and I'll tell you what, what a job. That was Duke Blackwell backpedaling and that was well bracketed. Oh indeed it was. Yeah, the uh, linebacker dropped out of the box back into uh, uh, coverage. But again, uh, Crable threaded the needle and hit Blackwell in stride. Just an incredible catch. Looking and looks to hand the ball off. No, he wants to throw. Throws that. He's got a wide open man. Here's over the shoulder. Catch touchdown. Matt Kamenkewicz, 30 yards on and on the money. Matt Crable. Beautiful run pass option that time. Set up very well by that Cougar offense. The offensive line gave Crable plenty of time back there to make a great decision. And he found Kamenkewicz streaking down the seam. Hit him right on the numbers with a nice soft pass. Touchdown, St. Francis. Morelli out of the gun once again, claps his hands, looks to hand it off, and uh, nothing doing there. It was Osterberger looking for running room, and he runs into a wall of blue-shirted Cougars. Yeah, there's not much there for him at all. Great pressure by the uh, the front three for the Cougars. They slanted in towards that run, and he had no chance whatsoever. Still 7-0 USF on the touchdown pass received, and here is a pass by Crable. Rexy has got it at the 25 and gets another yard to the 24. Caught it on his fingertips. That it did. It looked like it was going to float away, but he was able to high point the ball, bring it back in, and get a few extra yards after that catch. A great job by Rexy. Crable taking a look now. Hands the ball off. Here's a running, and there is a run by Martel Williams. Will Williams to the house. Good for 24 yards. Here's a snap, give to that tail back. Hawkins tries his way through the middle, gets out of a tackle. Ball is free, it's on the ground. Who's got it is the question. St. Francis comes up with the ball. A huge turnover that time by the USF Cougars, forcing that fumble and picking up that loose ball. Jamal Jackson, the inside linebacker, number 56, comes up with the ball. And the offense comes out on the field for the St. Francis Cougars with 58 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. St. Ambrose, and they'll run the ball. Here's Martell Williams looking to find, got a block. Oh. That's at the 50, 45, 40 down the left sidelines. Inside, angles out of bounds inside the B's 30 yard line. Tremendous open field blocking out there by the Cougars. I want to try and get a number on that. That was Kamakevich who came back from his wide out position and stuck a linebacker who was in pursuit. And that, uh, that sprung the uh, running back. Too wide to the right for Crable out of the gun. Short drop, looks right side. He's got Duke Blackwell on the fingertips, on the money with that toss. It'll be first and goal inside the five. So impressive. The touch he can put on that ball. Just a little seam route that way as they split the zone. Blackwell in stride on the outstretched fingers. And a great opportunity here for USF as they're inside the red zone down near the five-yard line. Tell you what, uh, Sean, great to see Duke Blackwell. A year ago, he was 11 of 15 on fuels. Nepper with the hole, right foot and kick long enough. It's curling a little bit, but good. 24 yard field goal back. Gavin Gardner and the Cougars add points to their total. They're up 17 0. Beckendorf calling out the signals, waits for the snap, looks, will he hand it off? He did, and then here is uh, Tarks. Thought he was going to get away for a moment, but ends up losing yardage. So that'll be a loss of about a yard and a half back to the 
Cougar 39 will bring up fourth down and seven, and they're going to go for it. Yeah, great pressure that time up front by the uh, USF Cougars uh, on uh, defense to uh, disrupt that. Uh, Northwest. Mankendorf drops the throw, looks, steps up, oh. and trying to get out of trouble, and they blow the whistle finally. I do not like it when officials let the play go on and on, especially if somebody's got a leg wrap. Right. That's how you get a leg injury, maybe a right. tibia fibula. Yeah, he was wrapped up. The problem is there was an offensive lineman at the uh, at his base that kept him vertical, so he couldn't really go down, and then he got swarmed over. And you're right, Joe, that, that's a recipe for an injury right there. Bunch line up to the left side out of it. They have motion back left to right, and Beckendorf looking to screen, and he's not going to go anywhere. And James Javisich did not buy the faking, brought him down at the 42, and now we have penalty flags again. That we do. A late flag came out in the flats over here towards the USF sidelines, so there might have been some extracurriculars after the play was over. And uh, Nick Lucas holding his helmet like... Day. And here is a play action fake. Beckendorf loads, throws the fade to the right corner. He's got a man out there, ball fought for, intercepted in the end zone. Will he bring it out? Ryan Johnson does bring it out across the 10, 15 to the 20 yard line, looking for a block angles near sideline. All down. Oh, and let's see if that's a penalty. That looked like a horse collar to me. Right in front of the USF bench, and now a late flag comes out because a USF player was drawing to the official. Now that may go the other way. Oh my. Jet Smith came over and made the tackle, one of the big offensive linemen. And it's oh, going to be an interception for St. Francis with 101, but it's going to be a backwards walk off because of the penalty. Well, again, hats off to Ryan Johnson. Again, was in the hip pocket. They've had Rixie on a couple of fly patterns, very, very close to six. Crable looks, time of the pocket, checking off, steps up, now runs, looking, and will throw the ball and nicely to Call. Call's got a first down out of bounds at the 45 with eight seconds remaining. Call doing a fine job, tiptoeing down the sidelines there to get a few extra yards after that catch and uh, gets into uh, the Bees' territory. Beckendorf. Looking again, hands it off. Hawkins, send, go, and that time oh, wrapped no. up nowhere. Wow. Let's see if you catch the number coming through there. Was that Jamal Jackson? It, it was. was. Yeah. Jamal Jackson from his linebacker position shot the gap and didn't give the uh, running back any chance whatsoever of making the play. So Hawkins was uh, hit, and uh, that's going to be a tackle for loss. Back at the 36, Grable is going to take this snap around the three-yard line, and he backpedals a yard deep and throws the ball right side. He's oh. got a man wide open, and Rixie's got it. There's Dan. Stops and stepped out of bounds quickly at the 43. <laughs> I don't think he knew he was out of bounds. <laughs> he was trying to make a move, and he must have spotted the white paint under his feet, and he just kind of stopped. But a fantastic throw and catch again. And, uh, boy, they are outside of the uh, shadow of their own end zone with lots of good real estate to work with now. Beckendorf out of the gun, bunch oh. line up to the left, drops the ball, picks it up and spun around and dropped. Cougars came through there, got enough of them to knock him down and that was Miles McClendon. Yeah, McClendon doing a great job and again it helps when the ball is on the turf. Bees move that linebacker core in and out, moving it around and Crable looks, wants to throw and throws right side so a spot's got to catch nicely, a little curl in pattern. And that's Rixie gathers it in at the B's 41-yard line. Yeah, just a little crossing route there by Rixie in the deep zone, and he did a great job of coming up with that one. No alligator arms, went after it bravely, got stuck after he caught it, but he pops up and he's good. Beckendorf back out there to quarterback. The looks to, on the read option to Hawk and spun around and dropped for a loss back around the B's 42-yard line. Beautiful pursuit by the USF defense out there. Uh, some backside pressure coming around. Great pursuit and uh, was able to get to him before he was able to go north and south. Yeah, it's amazing because we are in line directly. Young quarterback Bickendorf waiting again. Looks on the read option. Kept, kept, calls his own number. Oh. Lost the football. It's picked up by whom? The Bees have got it? Yeah, I think the Bees Francis. have it. Cougars. No, Cougars have it. Cougar Francis ball. Does yeah. get the ball. Wow. Well, Joe, you talked about it earlier. This is a game of turnovers. My heavens. I mean, it's almost a comedy of errors at this point. And uh, 
Let's see what uh, St. Francis can do on offense now. For the Bees, moving now from right to left into the win, and they're going to run the ball off to the left side, and again the Cougars gang tackle, bring it down for a stoppage at the 23. Well, Joe, we've seen with all the um, with all the turnovers here, you would think that uh, USF would try to really convert and do a backbreaker and just try to take you uh, the Fighting Bees out of this emotionally. So far, they haven't been able to do it. Bees show a lot of zone defense either side. This time, showing from the right side. Here they come. Crable throws light. He's got call. Call picks it off the turf. 45, 40 down the right sidelines. 30, 45. He's got a chance. He will score. Casey Call. If he stayed in bounds. This will be a touchdown pass of some 64 yards. He did it. Tremendous job by Matt Crable recognizing the blitz. He saw the defender streaking in from that side, knew the call would be unguarded, fired to him, Call picks the ball up off the paint, streaks down for a huge score. That is a, that's exactly what the USF offense needed to do. How about that footwork? Yes. I mean, this is not a small guy, 6'2", 216. Here in regulation, Villaferte in motion, stepping up. Beckendorf wants to run, but nice. the Cougars close down on him and stop him. Great job by the linebacker core to get in and get pressure there on the quarterback as they were trying to develop a rub route over the middle, uh, which is nothing more than two receivers crossing. And uh, the defense was able to get in there in time much faster. Flank to his left side, takes the high snap, gives ground, steps up, wants to run, pivots back and runs into trouble. In the silver and blue and he's going to be sacked back inside the 20. No chance whatsoever. He was spinning, trying to find some daylight, and the silver and blue came in, swarmed left, swarmed right, swarmed through the middle, and down he goes for a huge sack. You know, Kevion Evans was coming in for the left side. That's exactly where Beckendorf tried to pivot to. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. We're looking at the wrong color jersey at that point. Here's Crable. Meanwhile, Blitz showing defensive right side. Here's Crable looking, looking, dances, throws over the middle. He's got Kamakiewicz, get down. He's got it in his fingertips. Matt Kamakiewicz, good for 28 yards on fourth down. And we've got a Cougar down back around the 28. Is that Crable? I think it might. No, I don't think it is. 71, it's yeah, it's a line. No, that's Ian Wellman. Yeah. But again, a tremendous job, a little seam route. He was dragging past the uh, the first uh, receivers that were down there to clear out the zone. And a beautiful touch by Crable. Last name, Aria. Motion left to right behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, they try to sweep for it. They're not going to oh, get it. Oh, bad decision. No, St. Francis is much too fast for that. It was third and two. They're going to lose yardage to bring up fourth and longer. Yeah. And, of course, St. Ambrose probably will go for it here with 6.57 remaining on the clock. No. No, here comes the punt team. Wow. Okay. Okay, all Not right. going to matter, so yeah. this one goes into the books as a 31-13 win for St. Francis. A lot of good things to talk about here on Homecoming, Sean, and some things that certainly uh, need some attention. And the penalties continue to mount up, but all in all, on Homecoming, a win is a win, and the Cougars remain undefeated at 3-0.